fish house yesterday, so we were in that area, which was lovely. So, oh, we're going through a bridge, a tunnel right now. <laughs> we're actually watching the sun come up. It should be fully up, but I think like maybe four minutes. Uh, so that's been really nice to watch. We left about maybe 6.30, so we got up about five. Actually, no, I think we left like maybe 6.15. And our first destination is going to take about an hour to get to, so we're going for breakfast. And then we're going to be on our way. go along the beach. I don't see any yet. This is so beautiful. Got a surfer. That is so impressive. Holy cow. Oh yeah, I like that. Whoa, oh, lights out. What do you think of that? Oh, 
glowing on them. This is insane. <laughs> of the banana bread we got three all the reviews said buy like seven or as many as you can because you can take extra home when you're riding on the road to Hana you're going to get so hungry and there's only a certain amount of places where you can stop for food so it's definitely a good idea to suck up on that and the banana bread is insane and it says that the bananas on the island are some of the most incredible bananas in the world and so far it seems like that's true so loving it Coconut Glens, and yeah, this was definitely worth the wait, and John loves it too. <laughs> Away we go to next stop. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we were chasing the dog that was uh, in the back of the truck in front of us. Where is it? Oh my gosh, it's right here. <gasps> this. Oh, okay. All right, never mind, it's there. Beach, which was amazing but then my brother called me texted me because there it was an eight point uh, magnitude earthquake that just hit the Pacific and he's saying that Hawaii 
and Huli Maui is under Tsunami Watch. And I didn't get any notifications, but I don't really have service. I don't know how he got his message, so that's very lucky. So then uh, we talked to the, the park rangers and they said that it's due, the tsunami is due to hit at 4.30 tonight. And my brother was texting me to get to higher ground. So luckily we're on our way to a volcano. So that's pretty high up. But the thing is, I don't think we're going to be there for that long. So by 4.30, I'm not sure what we'll do. So we're probably, once we get to Hana and have better cell service, going to call the hotel and figure out if we need to evacuate or what's going to happen. So um, yeah, definitely uh, getting a little freaked out right now. foot waterfall and we just got back and I would recommend bringing three bottles of water if you are a couple we had I drink one John drink one and then we definitely could have used another one because it just it didn't feel overwhelmingly hot but like you just I don't know I just got overheated and you start sweating a lot because it's it's quite an arduous hike so it was totally worth it you'll do the regular hike you feel like you're hiking forever then you go through the it just turns into the bamboo forest and you feel like you're going through that forever and then all of a sudden the waterfall is just right there so um that was awesome and i thought it was easier on the way way down so totally worth it
something. <laughs> the second I see how beautiful something is, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't get the camera messed up. Oh, it was really completed the road to Hana and we're going to get back to the hotel about 6 10 ish so the sun should be going down about 6 45 so we made perfect timing and the tsunami watch was called off so that would have been around 4 30 so we're really lucky uh, we did get hit by some rain but that apparently every day it rains it, it rains on the way to Hana on the road to Hana um, yeah so definitely really hard day they <laughs> and I don't know if it's the whole part of the road to Hana or the, the after part that they call Divorce Road, but definitely for a reason because it's just, it is mentally and physically exhausting. And some of the turns, especially on the way back when you're on the edge and like the other vehicles going, when you're going the way in, you can kind of like hug the mountainside, but on the way back, you're just like on the edge and it is terrifying. So you're like, watch out, or wait, there's a car. And it's like, it's stressful. And then it's like, you know, don't look down because some of them, the views are just well they're beautiful but it's so high up so John's best advice is to take like a non drowsy uh, drive me if you get uh, car sick and usually I get car sick but he driving actually got car sick so I can't believe this and um, had got a really big headache I have a headache as well so uh, something to consider bringing some sort of headache medication we didn't and luckily he was able to find that at one of the uh, stops that we made um, definitely bring a lot of water. We must have gone through, what, like 10 water bottles on, on this trip? I'd say like at least 10 water bottles and I think we could have used uh, some more and we had to stop for a couple drinks. Um, trying to think, uh, you know, sunscreen, bug spray, good things to bring. Um, sneakers. So I brought flip-flops for most of the time, especially going down to the beach, but then I brought sneakers that I changed into for when I did the hike. And don't go past where it says the H Hakialala or whatever um, park where I found the, um, like where we found the hikes, the waterfall. Don't go past that because on the maps, when I was looking on my phone, it was telling me that the bamboo park was way past that. And the lady that I, I stopped and was asking and what I thought was on the map was that the dangerous road is like you could go to the bamboo forest but it was telling me that the bamboo forest was way past the uh, national park and it, I guess, wasn't. Um, so I think we started, we, I, it may have been that road that we're not supposed to drive on, which is past Hanas, past that national park, and it is definitely an unpaved road, which is um, like dirt. So luckily we were able to turn around, but it did get really scary. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, some things to think about, but it was, it was an exceptional ride. I don't know if I would do it again anytime soon. If I did again, maybe I would do it with a driver. Although I, that might be worse for car sickness. Cause then I'd probably be in the back. But my favorite things were the, I loved the black sand beach. I loved the bamboo forest and the waterfall. Those are my, probably my top three favorite sightseeing things, I think. And then just, I mean, just even though it was hard going around the turns, the views were just spectacular. And we got to see real surfers, the coconut ice cream is one of my favorite things, and the banana bread. But try to bring some healthy snacks if you can, because I just feel kind of like garbage from eating so much, like kind of like junk food. So if you can bring something healthy, some healthy snacks, that would be a good idea. 
but um, otherwise this is this is definitely one of the top things on my list to do in Maui it, this is like a must it's like a rite of passage uh, and I'm so glad that we did it and that his sister actually recommended this to us back in the day so uh, hopefully it's something you try out and make sure to be safe and I wanted to note that a lot of people mentioned going to Big Mama's Fish House after and I think it's actually better to go a separate day because after you do this journey, you're so exhausted and you're also kind of sweaty or you could be salty from going to the beach. And Big Mama's Fish, I keep calling Big Mama's Fish House, Mama's Fish House, it's, it's like a nice place. So, and I would suggest going during the daytime if you could. So you can kind of, you know, not dress like super fancy, but it is, you know, like a nice date night type of place. But I suggest going during the day because we sat next to the window and it was just the most glorious, beautiful view. And then right afterwards we went to like the beach that's right next to it and just kind of enjoy the day. So if you can do something like this, I would highly recommend. And we did not make reservations ahead of time accidentally. I tried, but then everything was booked up until like the next month. So what I did was I went on open table and then anytime there are cancellations and openings available, it alerts you, you can set up an alert for that. And then one opened up and in spur of the moment, we were out right next to it and I said, you know what? It's, it's like within an hour, should we book it? Yes, we did. Uh, it wasn't as quite dressed as I wanted to be, but uh, it was enough, so we went to it. And the, I thought the food was amazing. John said the best crab cakes he ever had. And the other thing is, if you don't want to spend like a million dollars, like the entrees are pretty expensive. And we just went for lunch. We didn't want to have a lot of food because we were going out for dinner. So we just ordered, I think like two or three appetizers. And then we ended up having <laughs> like a few desserts. <laughs> they have really good desserts. Um, so definitely something to consider. And we had a, we had a couple of drinks as well. So um, yeah, 